some municipalities permit another type of manifold setup. This one combines the functions of the backflow prevention device and the valve into one unit. These are called anti-siphon valves. As you can see, anti-siphon valves are located above ground and the supply lines drop back down below grade as they travel out to the different zones. Regardless of whether you're using anti-siphon valves or a backflow prevention device, they must be installed 12 inches above the highest sprinkler or according to local codes. Also, when using any type of PVC pipe above ground, paint the pipe with a good exterior type paint. This prevents the ultraviolet rays from baking the pipe, which would cause the pipe to become weak, brittle, and susceptible to pressure blowouts. At the valve manifold, make the electrical connections to the valves using the wire that was laid in the trench. Notice each valve has two wires. Take one wire from each valve, it doesn't matter which one, and join them together. These will be connected to the common wire going back to the controller. We have two valves which will require a total of three wires. Pull back the unused wires and save for any future expansion. Choose white for the common and any other color for each of the valves. Prepare the wires that will be connected to the valves and strip about one half inch of insulation from the ends. Now take the remaining single wire from one of the valves and connect it to one of the colored field wires. And take the remaining wire from the second valve and connect it to the other colored wire. Then connect the valve wires that we already tied together to the white or common wire. It's important to use waterproof wire nuts or grease caps to protect these connections from the elements. There are several different types to choose from. Make sure there is no copper wiring exposed outside of the wire nut to avoid electrical shorts and corrosion. Keep in mind, you'll want to know which colored wire goes to which valve when you start connecting wires to the controller. Now that our valve manifold is in place, we can start adding pipe from each valve to the zone it will be operating. Continue on down the line until every sprinkler location has been supplied. To connect the sprinklers to the lateral water supply lines, we recommend using Rainbird swing assemblies. This provides more flexibility to place the sprinkler exactly where you want it quickly and easily. At each sprinkler location, install a threaded fitting on the lateral pipe. Then, install a swing pipe assembly into the fitting until snug. Now, install the sprinkler head to the swing assembly and hand tighten. Then continue on to the next sprinkler location. If you prefer, you can use a simple handsaw for your installation. Just make sure you take off any rough edges before you glue. Follow these same procedures until all sprinklers have been installed. After all the pipe has been laid and the sprinklers have been installed, the next step is to flush the system. So take the tops off all the sprinkler heads and turn on the water at the main system control valve. 
Now, use the bleed screw to open the zone control valves one at a time. Turn the bleed screw a quarter turn. You'll hear the sound of water rushing as the valve opens. Flush each area until the water runs clear. When you turn it off, turn the bleed screw clockwise and hand tighten only. Now you can go back and reinstall the sprinkler tops. Position the sprinkler and stabilize it without filling the entire trench. Also, it's important to make sure the sprinkler is straight up and down for optimum performance. When finished, the top of the sprinkler should be level with the ground. Now you can fill in the trenches. Rocks damage plastic pipe easily, so only use clean, rock-free soil. Also, position the valve covers so they can be backfilled too. Notice we used bricks to provide a stable foundation for the box to set on. Later, when the landscaping is in place, even if the ground is wet, the box won't sink if someone steps on it. The irrigation timer is the brains of your system. Install it in a convenient location, either indoors or outside, but make sure you have power nearby. And if it is installed outside, it must be an outdoor model to protect it from the elements. It's a good idea to run the wires through a section of PVC pipe. This will help prevent damage to the wires. Prepare the same colored wires you used at the other end when connecting the valves. Now connect the common or white wire to the common terminal and take the colored wires that you connected to the individual valves and connect each of them to their own terminals. This allows each valve to be operated individually. Finally, after all the valve wires have been connected, supply power to the timer and program it according to its instructions. As you plan your watering schedule, check for any local water requirements or restrictions, such as odd or even day watering. This would also be a good time to install a rain sensor. When it rains, the rain sensor temporarily shuts off the system so that you don't water during wet weather. In fact, many municipalities actually require rain sensors and some even offer rebates to help cover the cost.